welcome and thank you for joining for another whiskey review today we're going to take a look at the four gate batch 12 something else dustin <laughs> what is it all right so this is the kelvin collaboration number three uh kelvin is a boutique um barrel maker basically and i guess they get these finished barrels from different uh, wineries distilleries you name it and they've been putting out some really cool really well done barrels and uh four gate has partnered with them to do a couple of different uh bourbons this is the third bourbon and i believe they've done a rye or two with them as well and this uh the the kelvin cooperage is that what, what yeah is that? that that is a px cask is it so yeah this is a px cask so i think they've done a they did a i'm pretty sure an oloroso one. Oh no they did a sherry rum cask was their batch one mm -hmm. and then batch six i believe that may have been like a cognac maybe another sherry cask but this one is definitely this is PX, PX yeah. sherry rum cask. Yes, PX yes, rum cask. PX rum. So my guess is maybe, I don't know if it was in the PX first, then the rum, or vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. Probably the PX first. Maybe they did like a rum with that, and then they have a little rum. Well, Dustin, I'll tell you what, it comes in at 61.85% ABV, so obviously cast strength, and this is bottle number 846 of batch 12. Yep. So big ABV. When uh, you bring over these bourbons, I like them when they're super high ABV, cast yep. strength, you know, older whiskey. Yeah, here, you're, so roughly? you're looking at, generally speaking, they say that they're generally getting around 10-year-old bourbons. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, they weren't able to disclose exactly what was in there. Mm -hmm. uh, they, batch one, they did announce an 11-year. My guess is this is about that. It's probably a touch younger. And uh, I think you'll pick up on the palate that there is a little bit of youth here. I also shout out to Jeffrey Wack. Who requested we do the uh, review of this? Yes. So, yeah. So Jeffrey, like, we're trying to get to anybody who put in a bourbon we have. We're going to try to do them. Mm -hmm. I believe yep. we've got a ECBP coming up at A121. I believe that's One of correct. our subscribers, and there might be another bourbon or two out there. Yeah, just let us know what you guys want, you want yeah. us to try next. We'll, we'll try to get to as many of them as we can as long as we have them. So, again, beautiful bourbon. Not easy to get your hands on, but Dustin does great with these things. Living in Cincinnati, being a native of Kentucky. As always, Dustin, beautiful caramel color. Yes. And buddy, let me tell you something. Just nose jumps. Yeah, I mean, mm. <laughs> it is big. It is big bold. Nose. And you are not missing that PX sherry, are you, Mike? No. So, so at first I was like, okay, I'm getting what I normally get with bourbon and caramel, but instantly that PX cast really changes the whole experience. Yeah, and I've noticed, depending on how you go into this one, because it is Sticky so big, camera. so bold, mm. sometimes you'll get like, and I've come around, I think, I'm, my guess here, guys, and again, I can't, I don't know, if, I don't have any insider information, but my guess is this is Barton Distillate, which has been used in a lot of uh, bourbons lately, because I'm getting a little bit of that oakiness that I associate with Barton. Yeah, and man, I tell you what. Every now and then that jumps out as being like, oh, God, that's Barton, and then every now and then it's like, ooh, that's PX. Chocolate. Dark there, chocolate. There is a war going on right now, mm -hmm. as far as this knows. And part of it is that PX cast, which I know well, from mm -hmm. like in just, you know, Isla Whiskies, they, they like a PX oh, yeah. cast. That dirty, sticky sweetness that's not fruity, it's just it's sticky sweetness. And then there's the traditional bourbon notes fighting there. And then there's just something else, which is like an oaky aged vanilla note to it. It is just, yeah. man, just big, full, and just right in your face. Oh, yeah. And that's how I like whiskeys in general, yeah. especially really good bourbons. Oh man. This one absolutely goes to 11 in terms of just flavor, nose, influence. This is a big, bold bourbon. It's not super aged, it's not super young. It's a, I think this is a really good age range, especially with these finished whiskeys. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, that cask is just, they teetered such a fine line of balance with that cask. All yeah. I know is, man, it's, it, it's rare that you can, th two or three things feel equal. Yeah. It's like a three-legged chair. Yeah. Or a th three-legged race, you ever do one of those? It's uh, not fun. You've got to really get uh, good with the person you're running with. Yeah, I had six sisters, so I was always with the girl. It was terrible. Shorter legs, yeah. doesn't work. You've got yeah. to be built the same. Yeah, I, could, I had to drag her along. It yeah. wasn't good. We didn't win. No. All right, Justin, I'm going in. Yep, go for it, Mike. But yeah, I mean, on this thing, you're just getting a perfect balance. And I think a lot of bourbon drinkers often tell me they don't like some of these finished whiskeys because it no longer drinks like a bourbon. This is still nosing like a bourbon. But it's got an extra element. It's got something else. It's not like it's a wine cask that has bourbon in it. Mike, thoughts? That's big, man. Initial and finished caramel chocolate things I would normally get from a bourbon. However, when it was on the palate, that PX cask was the dominant flavor for me. Okay. It, it was weird. It was almost like the PX cask was the palate and then bourbon is the finish. 
almost kind of way like um, the electric egg barrel brews finish for me. Mm -hmm. It's strong, chocolate, alcohol driven, but then at the end, creamy oak and vanilla mm -hmm. comes in. Mm. Aggressive, but a fun, a fun, a fun drink. Yeah, there's a lot of spice on this one. Yeah, I miss well. the spice. Sure. No, I do tend to. I mean, there's actually a lot of oak spice. There's bourbon spice. I think there's just some cinnamon on here, man. Um, nice bit of cinnamon, actually. As you say that, yes, burnt cinnamon, but yes. Yeah, yeah. I will say this though, for me, Mike, I believe that dark chocolate note is actually PX cask because this is darker chocolate than I usually get on a bourbon. This is much more PX driven chocolate because I always get that dark chocolate from a good PX. You're right. It's almost like yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's definitely milk chocolate. It's dark chocolate, almost bordering on cocoa. Now I do get a little bit of milk chocolate on the finish that I think is the bourbon. Just a little. It's not strong it's not something dominant again dude like i said right from the beginning with the nose it is it is a war going on between mm -hmm. the cask and what the natural uh distillate is doing here but again you know those are some of the whiskeys that i love the ones like that yeah clearly it's a bourbon mm -hmm. but clearly there is a cast that is driving a large facet of the experience mm -hmm. it always reminds me of compass box that um uh, magic cast we just did. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you're like there was the Avalon Hour, then there was the uh, I'm sorry, for the Imperial. Imperial yeah. yeah. So you like the back and forth of it because they were so evenly matched. Yeah. And that's not easy to do. I mean, that no. really is a sign of someone who blended this thing was just like perfect. Yeah. Somebody was going in there every couple of days and tasting the cast to make sure it hadn't gone too far one way or the other. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a wonderful job. Now I did actually get to meet the, one of the guys. Uh, yeah, recently you said, yep. Yeah, so um, you know, if you guys have a job where I can just go in there and taste whiskey periodically, uh, just let me know. You can just mail it to me. I'll just tell you what I think. You know, it's ready. Yeah, they seem like gracious guys. We're going really to give us some samples. Yeah, yeah, they're like good guys. Uh, but this was obviously a bottle I purchased, and Mike, you can already see I liked it, and I have backups. Yeah, my man hammered this hard. What does this run, Dustin? These are uh, one in ninety. Where's the uh, MSRP on this? I tell you what, that's worth it. Yeah. For sure. That I mean, this is a strong effort. I mean, here's the thing. I struggle with $200 for a standard bourbon unless it just does something unbelievable. I don't struggle with $200 for a extremely good whiskey. Correct. And I love when they do something different. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to pay a little premium if they're going to give me something I don't normally get. And that's what we've got here. So, Mike, you added water. Yep. I always do add a little bit of water to this one because it is fairly hot. Mm -hmm. Is it giving you anything different now on the nose? Are you... The bourbon cask is, is taken, the bourbon flavors and notes have taken the, moved into the forefront. They are now winning the race. I agree, but on the finish, it's sweeter than I think this bourbon would have been otherwise. And I think that is where the PX is adding. Now it's actually adding a milk chocolate that I think is the PX. You, we both know that that's what PX casks do. They add sweetness. They add sweetness. Stickiness. Yeah. And they, they tend to give me chocolate. I get chocolate almost okay. every PX and that's, what I'm getting at the end here, and again, based on my assumption, this is Barton, which is a pretty, pretty good guess, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. That has to be a chocolate note from the PX, and it makes the finish on this thing awesome on the nose oh, for me. That extra little bit of chocolate. Just a, there's almost some type of fruit that's covered in that chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Something light, pear, something like that. I can't get through it because there's a lot of oak here. Agreed. There's a lot of oak. Um, but it's not a unpleasant, it's all no. over the top. It's... It's nice. Now, again, it's not like, I like to think of Buffalo Trace as kind of the premier oak note that a lot of people want. This is not Buffalo Trace. It's a little mm -hmm. more assertive, a little more aggressive. It's not a more, Yeah, it's not as refined. Yeah. I will say this, though. You said from the beginning what a stunner this was. Yeah. What a stunner. I love this whiskey. Mmm. Yeah, but you write the oak note now with water. Again, it's more of the bourbon notes. It's more of that sweet caramel, but you're right. Where it's not a 50-50 fight anymore, it may be a 70-30, but that 30 from that PX cast is mm. just complimenting it so well. This is one of the better crafted bourbons I've ever tried. Oh, so now you go back in there with the water on there, Mike, and you're starting to get some of the fruitiness from the PX. Mm -hmm. Bourbon doesn't let it overpower. Mm -hmm. Starts bringing in the oak, brings in the spice, brings in the vanilla, mm -hmm. but it's there. And then they're fighting over whose chocolate dominates, but there's chocolate all over here. <sighs> chocolate factory. And again, and there's, I mean, there's a little bit of, again, roasted Yeah, the, 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 yeah the, there's, there's a nutty, there's a slight nuttiness here. There is a similar, there's something similar to finish than the Elijah, in the Elijah Rick Barrel Proofs. Just a oaky, ashy, char type of note. It's faint because mm -hmm. it's behind all that sweet caramel and vanilla yeah. and everything else from the PX, but it's still there. It's just, you don't get that unless the bourbon's at least eight years old, in my opinion. Yeah. No, so I, I would say at the minimum, mm -hmm. that's what this is. And just to get just enough wood influence to go, 
with just enough of three or four other things that I love. Yeah. So yeah. where are you at, buddy, as far as what's going on this one? I'm going to go high, Mike. Really yeah. high. 88. Oh, I was at 87. Yeah, I, I mean, this for is, me, that's a high bourbon. That's about high as high bourbon. as you've given anything, not King, Kentucky. I agree. This may be, yeah, this, this is right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm putting this a point over that uh, Wild Turkey 17-year. Way better whiskey. And at some point, guys, we might get around to some of these old carters that everybody's hyped up. Master's Keep, Orphan Barrel, I'd pick this over any of those. <sighs> that Lost Prophet's got such a great flavor, though. That one's close nah, for me. Nah, that one right there. Mm. But, this, this, is a, this is one of the top five bourbons I've had in the last two years. Yeah. This is big. It's bold. Love it. It's intense. And if you great are, great. if those are words you like in your bourbon... This is a must-buy. Anyone who follows the whiskey channel knows I like aggressive whiskeys. We mm -hmm. like aggressive yeah. whiskeys. And this is right in that same vein, man. Excellent, excellent whiskey. I'm an 87. Dustin's an 88. For those of you who uh, tend to, you know, dabble in the bourbons as well, this is a great one to try. I'd like to uh, know your thoughts if yeah. you were able to get your hands on it. And Dustin, until next time, I want to wish the folks. Happy drinking. We'll see you then.